Thanks so much for joining me. I'm Lorelai Shimayo. This is Metaphysical Empowerment and Wellness Events. We host events online and throughout the Northwest. We interview our readers, our healers, and our vendors, so you get a chance to know who we are before you meet us in person or online. I'm here today interviewing Denise Barrett. Denise, it's lovely to have you. Oh, great to be here, Lorelai. So please, tell us a bit about your work. What is it that you share at our events? Yeah, so my work is centered around water, and water as a healing instrument, water as a uh, a, a vehicle for consciousness. And so I studied under Dr. Emoto's uh, group, but unfortunately after he passed, he passed in 2014, but I went searching for him. And uh, the reason was I met him uh, back in 1996. Uh, and from that time, I've been thinking about how I can bring my own work more into the world uh, because I studied energetic healing science as well. Uh, my day my day is really about uh, being a disaster preparedness uh, manager, but uh, at night I, uh, I apply my work uh, in healing. And so what I'm going to bring to uh, the community is really uh, the use of water in healing by using an instrument called Kazutama 2. I can actually show it. <laughs> and basically it's, a, uh, it's a, a, re a, re a magnetic resonance instrument that measures the energetic field. It identifies frequencies that are out of resonance, out of balance, and together with setting intention and using the instrument to uh, basically imprint water with those frequencies. And so it's, it's a bit like homeopathy in the sense that water, of course, holds consciousness, holds frequencies, all is energy, all is energy consciousness, if you really want my personal opinion. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and so then what we do is we put, uh, we basically use the instrument with a computer program to, to imprint water. And then the client takes the water uh, and then ingests the water in doses. So they can either uh, directly put it under their tongue or they can put it in water and drink it uh, during the day. And I, uh, I do uh, practice one-on-one -on -one healing, but my, my goal and my role, I think, in the world is to advance this field. Because there's very few people who are doing uh, energy work with and through water in the way that I'm doing it and the way that the Japanese practice it. And I really appreciate the model, it works for me. And I'd like to work with other energetic healers uh, and, and other uh, medical practitioners who get the energy, uh, that, the, the, that energy is such a critical factor in what's going on in our lives. And water actually is one of the most important instruments uh, in our cellular health, in our DNA expression, and I really think it's, for me, the frontier of uh, energy healing science uh, and, and water science. And so I really want to advance the field. And so a lot of my work, too, is, is for building relationships and coalitions and reaching out to the water science people as well as, well as the healing practitioners so that I can be a, a bridge builder in this field. Well, I know a little bit about... Um, is, is it Iwamoto? Or Iwamoto? Is that how you yeah. pronounce his name? Yeah, I know a bit about... His work but so can you say a little bit more of uh, are you selling products of the water is there some way yeah. that you're tuning them tailoring them to each person or just say a yeah. little bit more of what I'm sorry I gave the wrong date I actually met him in 2006 so okay. it wasn't it wasn't that long ago but it was long enough ago <laughs> as you get older you know you forget the dates but so um, as I had said this uh, is water that um, when I when I uh, take the resonant uh, energy assessment we come up with a profile <laughs> And it's really on this on this instrument here on the computer, and uh, I can actually get it to move while we're talking, so that you can see. Uh, I had actually done an energy field assessment before coming on on camera with you, and so what what's happening is this water is being imprinted right now mm -hmm. on this pad uh, with frequencies that I picked up in the energy field. In other words, frequencies that would have been out of resonance. We basically put put the opposite on the spectrum because it's all actually on the same bandwidth, but it's really, you know, low energy, high energy, high energy is really what we want. And then, so we can be measuring uh, the emotional field. Uh, we go on the fourth dimension of the field. We measure where uh, emotions and belief system may have some uh, stuck uh, qualities or low energy and people really uh, have, benefited when I've done this they've really kind of recognized when the assessment comes out I always you know gently talk about what I'm, what we're finding and it's amazing how much they recognize 
and then I say, okay, well then we'll imprint the water uh, with frequencies. Uh, and then it's so important, as you know, in healing to be able to really own it, <laughs> own where you're at, and also to really set intention. So we help the client to, to be able to set intention and to work on some things that may be for them cutting edge because they've had recent experiences which, in which, for example, disappointment, betrayal, you know, um, certain fears have come up. Uh, so this really is a complementary um, uh, feature. So we do bring in the spiritual world because we bring in the guides and the angels. We support people uh, as they're setting intention, and then we can do follow-ups. A bottle like this, uh, you could take a dose or two a day, can last about a month. And so uh, it's a very, it, it's long lasting. Uh, and it's also, in, and I've been using this water for a year and a half. I, of course, had a strong foundation in working on my healing process. But I can tell you that I, I always call it sort of the nudge. It, it, water has an amazing ability to nudge us. It's really, the Japanese would say the spirit in the water is working uh, with us. And kazutama is actually the word in Japanese is really uh, a tip to the hat of that we're, you know, we're really living in a, in a universe that uh, sources expression is through numbers and geometry, sacred geometry. Mm -hmm. And so it brings together in this program this knowledge and this wisdom around um, frequencies really being, you know, words and numbers being based uh, as sort of the constructs of sacred geometry and how things work in the world. There are laws of um, attraction, symmetry, harmony, resonance, all play a role through the water um, in helping support uh, clients in their healing process. Oh, it's great. It's great. And then, so, and, and, uh, so I imagine like if I came to you for a session, there's some way you'd be testing what energy is in the field right around me. Yeah. Right? Totally. So you're testing just for me. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Just for you. I can do it for a whole group. Mm -hmm. um, I do that. I do that sometimes when I do work with um, group, you know, groups like at companies. Mm -hmm. um, I've also given, I've had some interesting experiences working with people who may do new moon ceremonies or full moon ceremonies. And so they're tuning into uh, the planetary energies, and, uh, and although we're all different in how those planetary energies affect us, when I do a group uh, assessment, there's something for everybody that comes through that ceremony, and uh, I put it in the water, and people uh, go home with the water uh, and ingest it, and we've had some mm -hmm. really good feedback um, from people who've, who've had some experiences with that. Uh, my favorite thing is when someone comes to me not believing any of it, <laughs> because I think it, and, and then they could, they really kind of start getting it. I have a client that I've worked with on three sessions now. Uh, I also do, the long, I can use the instrument to do long distance healing. You can also use the instrument, put water in front of the screen, like if you were talking today and doing a healing, the water, because of the holographic field, uh, the energy and the intention, the, the, that energy goes into your water, that glass of water that you might be drinking right now. Um, but it's nice to work with this client who on a whim, she heard me, someone talk about me on a radio program she called me and she said, well, I'll get back to you. She asked a lot of great questions. I'll get back to you whether or not I'm, I'm going to be committed. And she committed to five sessions for her birthday. And we're on number three. And I've gotten some really great emails back from her. Um, and she va val validates by using another energy healer uh, who said that she's making incredible progress. And the uh, results that I'm getting from the assessment are corroborating with what she's also finding from her medical doctor in terms of like blood poisoning. She she's trying to recover from. So it's pretty, it's pretty amazing and it's wonderful. And for me as a healing practitioner, I, I think I found something that I really love and can be really put out into the world in a way that is accessible and affordable um, and uh, can complement a lot of other practitioners work. Yeah, it's great, it's great. So it sounds like this is the primary modality and then there are other things that you can or that you do mix in sometimes. It's how did yeah. you, how did you open to this work initially? Just the mixture of all the different things that are. That yeah, you, you know, I, um, I'm 25 years into a career which has been largely centered on working with humanity. I started as a Peace Corps volunteer back in 1988. I'm gonna be dating myself a bit. And then I worked internationally uh, in, in largely um, conflict zones in Africa in complex humanitarian operations. I was a leader and a manager um, I was humbled and blown away and often in over my head uh, with the complexity of, of human situations like in civil wars. I also worked post-genocide uh, uh, in Rwanda, be, starting out in the, in the refugee camps in Tanzania and then going into Rwanda. 
I've worked in Liberia. So I, I worked a lot in those fields and I, um, I guess I really started to recognize who I was. And I went to healing school after I came to a place where I felt the, let's just call it the industry of aid, the industry of development, um, that I had more questions than answers. And I felt like I really needed to, to find something. And actually, I went, uh, the Barbara Brennan School of Healing kind of found me because one day I was getting ready to go overseas and I went to a bookstore to buy books and Barbara Brennan's Hands of Light really shined because there are these hands of light on the cover, but also it just kind of was right in front of me. And I said, okay, I need to read that book. I was so busy with my job the first year that I didn't read it until the second year. And then I got, you know, goosies. <laughs> I really got, you know, like I was like, this framework really is, is really resonating. And I feel like this is something that I need to study. So I did go to the school for a couple of years. There's a four year program and I did two years of that. And then I went back out into the world because I, uh, I'm an organizational leader. I'm a person who wants to move things on a bigger scale. And, um, and so I ended up going out back into the world. Then, uh, as I said, meeting Emoto in 2006, there was a, um, a memory for me of him. Uh, I was working uh, with Mercy Corps, which is out of Portland, Oregon, and I was leading the organization um, down there post-Katrina. And then uh, Emoto came and I'd read his books and I saw the What the Bleep movie. And, so he did a water ceremony at Lake Pontchartrain. So that was just a marker for me. But then in the last couple of years, as I was evolving my thought about what's gonna, what am I gonna do for the next phase of my life and really drawn back into healing, um, then I said, well, where's Emoto? And then I was very surprised that he had passed away. Um, and so, but I was able to find that there's still a, a great organization behind him and his son, Hiro, uh, and his wife are leading that organization. So I went to Japan and I studied to become what's called a Hado instructor. And this enabled me to be able to teach all of his teachings uh, as part of the organization. And then uh, I studied the Kazutama again, this uh, magnetic resonance system, which he also used. He did it in the days of manual, where it was really about being able to, the, the healer being able to hear, uh, kind of using, using our, our regular senses and higher, higher sensory perception to get the right frequencies, like. Uh, if your deficit is in loving gratitude, for example, which is one of his favorites, then there's a frequency number. And then they, they really developed a whole uh, numbering system for all the frequencies that are programmed into this Kazutama system. So that's kind of my story. And now it's uh, really developing the enterprise and developing um, relationships. And I like to go the whole spectrum of what water's about uh, in terms of just its ability to hydrate and its value for health because sometimes you meet people at that, at that place easier than if you meet them at that place where you're starting to talk about, well, it's also an instrument for healing and expanding consciousness. And obviously uh, there's a great community that you put on also would understand, I think, that whole story. But uh, I, I really have always wanted to take things out in a grander scale so that, it, so that more people can really access healing. Uh, I think we're living in the age where we're coming up to a big shift and it's really important that people can understand how to access their own um, issues in a way that helps them to transform. Um, and maybe they're, they're not so comfortable with, with that, all the modalities that are out there, but I think introducing them to certain types of modalities like this uh, could be more accessible. Um, yeah. So that was, this is great. I'm really excited. I'm excited to experience more and more of your work. Um, thank you. So how can people find out more about you and your work on the, on the web? Yeah, so I do have, so my organization is highhado.com and hado is really uh, meaning vibration or vibrational energy. Mm -hmm. That's what Dr. Emoto called it. So highhado.com, uh, so H-I-G-H-H-A-D-O.com. Uh, and again, I live in the Portland area. Yeah, H I mm -hmm. H I G H H A D O dot com. Great. You'll see uh, both the work that I do on structured water, but um, my real, true, deep passion is the vibrationally enhanced water that's used for healing mm -hmm. and expanding consciousness. Great. Thank you so much. It's been lovely hearing from you. We're excited yeah. to see you at the events. Yeah, I'm gonna. I'm really excited, and thank you for this opportunity to speak to the audience. You're very welcome. And so, and everyone listening and watching, you can find more about us on, on the web at metaphysicalempowermentevents.com. Thanks so much, Denise. Thank you so much, Florida. Have a great day.